Hi, I'm Sam Hickman, and this is a video about all of the costumes from the Sam Hickman Variety Hour, the themes, the influences, materials, constructions, all of that goodness. Um, this is a video for maybe three people at most. Um, so let's get into let's get into the themes, the ideas, and everything. Um, let's go on this let's go on this journey together. So there were nine costumes in total. We will go through all of them. So the whole kind of thesis statement of the costumes, the through line, came um, in 2021. There was a very minuscule chance that I was going to be doing my one woman show in London. And I kind of looked at all of the costumes that I had for previous shows. And I really thought to myself, you can't wear a gown because all of these people will have been in their home for the last like year and a half. They won't recognize you as one of their own and they'll turn against you. Um, so that was kind of like the little inside joke I had with myself. And so I kind of constructed the, the opening look based off of that idea. And so all of the subsequent costumes for the Sam Hickman Variety Hour trilogy kind of came out of that idea of like, kind of it's, it's all pajamas until it isn't pajamas. So kind of the overview of the Sam Hickman Variety Hour costumes, like the, the story we're trying to tell is the goddess Hickman has kind of fallen from the sky. The celestial body has descended to earth. Um, and so like, She's gradually throughout the night trying to get ready for re-entering into society. And so that's how we kind of go from like beginning pajamas, middle pajamas, like different versions of robes and like and house coats and things. And then we end on the encore with the kind of a gown, a structured item. And so that was kind of the the idea behind it. Um it was all pink, um, mainly because I look great in pink, but also because like I, there was kind of this this silly like very light ethereal kind of really sweet sunset feel that I wanted to kind of evoke this kind of cloud clouds at sunset was the idea, um, and like the whole like pink for girls thing that was like silly. Um, also, I did see a video of Barbara Cartland's wardrobe, so it's kind of this pink fluffy kind of mess. And so uh, we'll start with the opening look. We'll try and tell the story of the Sam Hickman Variety Hour through the costumes. So if we start with the reveal look, which was only at the very, very, very last show, um, and it's only because I wanted to differentiate between the prologue to the final show and the beginning, the start of the final show. And so it's all kind of scraps from the dress from the encore and also um, leftover trim that I didn't use from uh, previous things. And then um, the, yeah, it's all just, it's all just scraps from the encore material, dress materials that's just been kind of repurposed and made into this kind of little like shift night dress with a little cape on top and a like feather trim. It was really fun to put together because I've never done like a reveal before. And then the spotlight didn't turn on and <laughs> no one got to see the reveal. So that was pointless, but fun, fun, never mind. Anyway, so the opening look. So the main kind of influences and ideas from the opening look for the Sam Hickman Variety Hour was kind of Hedy Lamarr and the Ziegfeld Girl meets that one Miss Cracker runway where she has like the gold dripping down her one side and meets that one RuPaul bit where she goes, girls, that. Um, the, the ears were kind of a mistake, but we'll start with the robe because that was the most intentional. Um, it was all hand embroidered. It was like a bunch of different sequins, little stars. The kind of, the idea we're trying to tell with the piece is that, like I said at the beginning, the goddess Hickman has descended from Earth, she's kind of crash landed and stardust and sparks are flying everywhere and just sort of descending from the, the shoulder. The original idea behind what we were gonna do for the headpiece was uh, kind of inspired by this v &A showgirl costume that I, I thought would really, really be silly and fun and like just have a giant moon on my head, but it's, it was, it was a little bit beyond my capabilities. Um, so we kind of, I went for something a little bit more simple. I wanted to do just like a nice little bow, but then I messed up the sides that I embroidered on. And, um, so both sides were the same, which is so silly. Um, 
and and so they just sort of it, the ears I'll say it were a mistake from start to finish but they I think they look really nice on the last show and the last show only I think that is I think they really kind of like hit correctly for the last show for the first show when I walked onto stage I bumped my head on the ceiling of backstage and so for the entire first monologue of the first Sam Hickman Variety Hour, the ears are like pointing out sideways because I kind of like, I'm fighting. I, I don't think I'll do something as big and also less pinned on because this thing was loose. On the back of the ears, right before the first show, I did embroider like a little Sam and then a big arrow because um it was gonna be starting backwards because I started the show facing away from the audience and then I was gonna turn around, but the lighting was uh, too dim and I didn't realize, so nobody could see it or read it. So that's another waste of my fucking life. Anyway, um, I the slip underneath was just a bias cut slip um, with a pocket. I think by the time we get to the second show and the second bias cut slip, um, the kind of techniques, the patterns, everything is is so much it is so much better, and so it's a much nicer garment to wear. This original slip was made um, kind of when I was twenty kilograms heavier, and then I lost a bunch of weight, and then I just had to put elastic on the back just to make sure the straps didn't fall down. And I think um, you know it served its purpose. It served its purpose. I would not have made it out of that material had I um, really thought about it because it was really, it was like kind of a bit too stiff of a satin to really drape. Um, and it was just kind of a, a polyester satin. And I think given the choice, I would have gone for maybe like, I would have really splashed out and, and done a silk because I wore it so much, so much. And then when we get to the second act of the second show, that slip, the purple one, I have worn that so much since the show. It's um, it's like a really nice thing to wear around the house and everything because it's just silk and it's really nice. Anyway, we'll get to that. Finally, the shoes. The shoes were, I'll say it, the biggest issue of this opening costume uh, because they kept catching. They just kept catching on this goddamn tool that I decided to put on. I wanted like a really light tool. I did, so I did this robe um, for the show. And then for a friend's birthday present, I made her like a, a, a robe and I had um, other friends help out and ruffle a bunch, a bunch of trim. So it really looks like a boa. Whereas this, I kind of wanted it to keep it really light and kind of ephemeral and like have it be kind of like you know, a little, a little gauzy, a little like fun. Um, but that does mean that for some reason, um, every single pair of shoes that I wore for this opening monologue just got snagged on the tool, no matter what, what pair they were. And I think it was my fault for picking stilettos. I don't think I would have done that if I really had thought about it more. Um, but I had, I had stage blindness. I'll say that. I was just like, ooh, ooh, I gotta wear a pair of stilettos. These are cute. Well, let's wear those. Um, there were three different pairs of shoes for this opening monologue. And I think the final pair were like, the most comfortable version of that. The opening ones for the very first show were way too steep, way too steep. They were really nice, like toe strap sandals. So they were really good to play in. They just weren't good to walk or stand in. Uh, the second ones were just had too much of a platform, which caused issues for the playing. Um, and you can hear it if you listen back to the opening monologue song. Like, you can hear where I'm, like, fumbling around trying to find pedals. Um, and then this one for the final show. I think they work, I think they work really nice. I think they were really nice to play in. They were really easy to stand and perform in. Um, so I think we kind of got there eventually. I think we really goldilocks it between, like, not enough, too much, this, that, and the other. And then we kind of got to the to the right thing. Oh, the materials of the robe. That's what I wanted to point out for the very last time. Um, I also think I would have improved the cut of the robe had I made it at a later date when I was a little bit more experienced with it. Because it was kind of like, it was one of the first costumes, costumes I ever made for myself. And I think um, because of that, the robe is, it's really narrow on the shoulders. It doesn't kind of, it doesn't come out, there isn't enough volume in the skirt section to really give it a lot of body. And so it kind of, 
uh, it sits nicely at times, but I don't think it was the best version of what it could be. But by that time, I had spent so much time embroidering on little tiny sequins um, that it was like, you know, this is this is what you get. Anyway, um, so it is a crystal organza body and then the sleeves are chiffon and I think that worked really nicely and I think it moves really nicely um and it was it was all right to play in but I do think that there were just a couple of fit issues that if I had done it at a later date would have been really easily resolved by me just having a better idea of how to draft a pattern for a robe that's it for the opening look and the pearl necklace obviously was all the way through the show um, because it's comedy and I love little, little sight gags, um, that obviously somebody at home just went, oh my God. Um, so you're welcome for that. The second look from the Sam Hickman Variety Hour is of course the leopard print robe. The idea behind this one was that, um, it was kind of like a dressing gown. It's just a dressing gown. We're kind of going from kind of the 40s and the 50s into kind of more of the 60s kind of leopard print. We have the, the pillbox hat, which I think is very silly and fun, but definitely like doesn't kind of fit the theme, but also kind of makes a little bit of sense. Like, oh, she's, you know, she's had to run out, you know, she's in her dressing gown. She's had to run out. Bare minimum, she can put on a hat, you know? Um, this was really nice to, to make. I did bedazzle it by the third show. I just got little stick-on sequins and things, and I sequined, embroidered on a giant S onto the back of the the robe that you absolutely cannot see. Um, so that was another pointless embroidery. I think uh, this sh the, the show is very, like, pointless embroidery. I think that's the idea behind it. Like, little tiny touches that you either really, really noticed or you absolutely didn't notice at all. Um... And so that was, I think it was one of my favorite things. It was a bed sheet um, that I got on sale at Wilco. Thank you so much. And um, a bunch of uh, voile sleeves that I already had. Um, and then just the satin from the previous previous costume and the final costume. Um, and that was, that was that look. I liked this look. I think it was really like, I, the idea behind it was that I could take off one robe, put on another robe. And then for the final interval, I, interval look, I could just put that on on top of me. And so I wouldn't have to like, like the quick changes could be as quick as they needed to be. Um, in reality, I ended up having like a full 10 minutes between each change and the only real quick change needed was not quick at all so um you know you get what you're given anyway the interval the interval dress is based off of a dkmy dress that i loved i had this black dress that i adored i wore it to high i just wore it so much um, and I loved it, and it eventually kind of fell apart and deteriorated quite significantly by the end of its little life. And so I decided that I would take it apart and I would make a pattern out of it so that I could make more of them. Um, and so I did that, and then I was like, oh, I have this, I have this bed sheet. I should, you know, I should make a really long summertime version of this, um, of this dress that I really like, because what if it was floor length? What if it was a maxi dress version of this, this dress that I've worn and adored for years? And so I made it and then I put it on and it just looks like pajamas. Um, and I love those pajamas. Like it's, it's my favorite house dress. And so, um, at the time when I was putting together all of the costumes for the show, I was watching a lot of Golden Girls. And one of the main inspirations for this look was all of the Sofia Petrillo, um, like really, really gathered 80s dressing gowns, nightgowns that she wears throughout the entire like run of the show. And she does wear a lot of like white, really, really heavily gathered kind of weird structural kind of like facings and yokes that are then like heavily gathered and I I loved that and I said oh we should do that in you know a, sh a chiffon and really make it kind of elegant and like this was um probably the easiest to make because I had already made 
two of these by this actually I've made three of these by this point because again these are my favorite pajamas to wear around the house they're so comfortable I get to lift up the skirt when I go up the stairs and feel like a little Victorian lady like it's it's a great it's a great dress um and so like being able to do it in like a like a chiffon with a with a like a, a satiny lining this was the one that always gets a really big reaction but was probably the simplest to put together um and so um this was originally meant to have feather trim around the base but um i ended up using a satin bias binding instead and i think it looks really nice and i think it wore a much like wore better throughout the shows um so that was the interval the next one we're going to discuss is the robe at the very very end of the show with the giant train this was another golden girls reference um i watched a lot of golden girls when i was putting together all of the costumes for the show and so um rose snylan wears this like light pink dressing gown a lot of the time and i think i thought it was adorable i thought oh my god it goes on theme it's a robe perfect let's do it and so i put together this kind of a huge huge train um it was a blazer pattern on the top and then just like a huge circle train at the back um it was a lot of fun to put together i think it was like it came together really quite quickly but it was time consuming um and then I did like a little bit of bedazzling in between the first show and the second show. I kind of jazzed up the lapel with a bunch of sequins and I did the pockets with sequins. And then I did along the shoulder seams and along the cuffs with sequins. And I think those look really, really good because they add a little bit of pop and a little bit of depth to the, the robe. It's the same shift dress from the opening underneath. Um, and then a different pair of shoes that it took me the entire run of the show to like an entire 13 months to be like, why didn't I just wear the shoes that I wore at the very end of the show at the very beginning of the show? Like, why didn't I just wear one pair of pink shoes that went with the satin that is in like most of the costumes? I don't, I'm, it's not, I'm not, you know, I wanted enough shoe changes, I guess. I wanted eight pairs of shoes in this show. Um, but anyway, I, um, I love the little bow that I made with it. I think that's one of the cutest things is it's this little tiny satin bow with a bunch of little crystals on it. And I think it is adorable. Um, and then um, one of the one of the issues of this piece was the ties. The ties in this show were a big issue, except for the leopard print robe tie that was chiffon. That was just a black chiffon. And it, for some reason, no, I never had any problems with it, but all of the other ties in this show caused such havoc. <laughs> this one, like, it just, it, I would walk on stage and it would just come undone. And it was like, I really had to like get in there and like tie it really tight in order to have it just stay there. I don't think I would have done any ties had I thought about it. Like I, there would have been no ties on this show if I really like had, if I could do it again, there would have been none. Um, I think in terms of the size of this piece, I think it worked beautifully in the Sherman, but I don't think it worked particularly, like, I don't think for the bows it worked, like, I think it was too big for the stage of Wales Millennium Centre, like, because it really took up so much. And then when we were doing the bows, like, <laughs> I was, I was too centre stage like it was it was truly right in the middle of everything so i had to kind of like jerk it out of the way so people could do their bows um but i do think it's it's one of my favorite things to look at i think when i look back at the photos and everything i think it is one of those costumes that is incredibly easy to play with play in like really really comfortable to wear like really fun and easy but looks very dramatic came together quite quickly all things considered and like has that level of scale because the idea behind having such a huge trail was i watched behind the candelabra and liberace had like a huge cape at one point and i said oh a giant train on something while you're sitting down playing an instrument yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really easy idea of creating a lot of drama without having to actually do anything. So that was kind of 
how that all came together. Um, I really, I really like that costume. I think um, steaming it between the shows was difficult, but um, <laughs> we got through it and that's what matters. It also did not fit on any of the racks. Like it would always be on the floor on every single like hanger, anything that I put it on it would just like trail on the floor because it was so long, which I, I loved. I loved, I loved. Anyway, okay, so. For the first show, we're getting into the second act costumes now. For the first show, um, the idea behind the jumpsuit was that it was kind of this 1970s conversational pit, a little bit casual, a little bit formal. Like, it's a little bit coming out of the pajama theme. Like, it's a little bit, it's still comfortable. It's still really easy to wear. It's made out of a bed sheet, you know? I'm wearing these like beige sandals that have, are really, really good harp shoes, by the way. Um, and then like, it's kind of, you know, it's something a little bit more casual and a little bit, a little bit fitted, but not too much that it's like people clothes. It's still kind of riding the line between like, would you wear this to, um, I don't know, a very casual affair, maybe. Um, but it's, yeah, I thought I was going to wear it a lot more in real life because it is just a, a jumpsuit. It's just a nice jumpsuit. And I did not wear, I wore it twice in real life, which was a real shame because it was, um, I think quite, quite a, quite a time consuming little make, um, all things considered. That was for the first show. For the second show, the bias cut slip dress number two, the purple one. Um, I loved this dress. So this was kind of, we, we got out of the purple theme. If the, if the first show second act costume was getting out of the kind of like pajama theme, this one was getting out of the color theme because we're kind of gradually getting back to society. The goddess Hickman is gradually like making progress sartorially. And so this is, um, this was one of my favorite things to wear. And I wear this all the time and I love this dress so much. So it was a four pound monsoon dress that my friend got me from the YMCA on Wellfield Road. And this is what it looked like. <laughs> and then this is what it ended up looking like. I, I adored it. I adored it. I like truly was doing fittings on it right until the day before the show because I just wanted it to fit and have absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. And I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. It was great. It was 10 out of 10. Great. Um, I made a teeny tiny bow for the, for the back of the head that kind of referenced to the ears from the beginning of the show. Um, that was like a little tiny, little tiny thing in there. Um, and then the shoes were leopard print. They were just a dream to play in. They were just like a nice, like really good looking mid heel. That was just a joy. To, this is my favorite outfit from the show, I think. Um, in terms of like comfortable being able to play in it, being able to like do everything in it. Also, there was kind of like a reveal because I used the original kind of bodice from the dress as kind of a little cover. Um, and I think that was just, it was such a nice thing to wear. And um, yeah, it was such a nice thing to wear. And thank you to my friend Laura for buying it for me because I, I just, I adore it and I wear it all the time. And when it was really hot over the summer, it was nice to just have like a really nice high quality silk dress to just slap on and be like, it's too hot for anything. Ah, oh, it was great. It was great, love that. Anyway, um, I also really enjoy the asymmetrical hem. That is just how it worked out with the big skirt panel from the original dress. It just ended up with like an asymmetrical like handkerchief hem. And I think that was, I think that was what I liked most about it was that it definitely didn't look kind of an off the rack, like straight hem. It was kind of a little bit different. It was a little bit fun. It was also going to behave a lot better when I sat down and had to play harp in it. It was gonna like really just behave itself and ha have a lot more coverage where I needed. Um, and I, I think that was a 10 out of 10 from that, from that one. Moving on to the encore dress. So, at this point in the storyline, 
of the Sam Hickman Variety Hour trilogy. In the costuming of the night, she has fallen to earth. She's gradually getting ready. She's getting ready. She's getting ready. And then for the encore, she is ready to re-enter society. And so this is um, kind of a Helen Rose design that was made, I believe, for Grace Kelly. Um, and then I have shortened it so that I can play harp in it. I've made the skirt a little bit less kind of full so that I could get in and out of it a little bit quicker, which um, was the main issue of this dress because it was meant to be a quick change and the quickest I could get into it was about a minute. And it was always the shoes that always caused an issue because I was going from these big platforms from the robe at the end of the show for the big sing song to more of a pump and every single time Every single time, no matter what, I was always kind of, there was something that went wrong trying to get into this dress. And so the first time around, I put it on and the big tie was on the wrong side of the dress. Um, <laughs> um, nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Every single, every single time there was something wrong with it. And the first time it was the tie. The second time it was way too loose. I made this thing in, for the November, 2021, photo shoot and by the time we got to the January show it was way too big for me by the time we got to the June show it was just so loose that I had to pin it to my bra underneath so that it wouldn't fall over um for the February show 2023 I took it apart put it back together again added boning to the side seams and the front and then um it kind of fit really really nicely However, watching it back, this shoulder is like turned in. Somehow in trying to like get it on quickly, this shoulder is like the wrong way around, which is so annoying because it fit really nicely this time. Um, but I don't think it ever worked as a quick change, but I think for a lot of people, it was their favorite costume of the evening. Um, it was kind of all made out of scrap fabric as well, which is so fun. Um, so it is, I had leftover velvet from another project in my kind of fabric stash and the skirt is made out of chiffon that was from the interval dress. So I just over ordered that and then I had extra for making the, the big circle skirts that went into this. And it's two layers of chiffon circle skirts that all have bias binding around the hem. And then um, a, a satin layer underneath that has horsehair braid to give it a little bit of volume. Um, I think this was, by the, by the time I took it apart and I refitted it, refitted it. It was, um, it was really nice to wear. It was really like really easy to play in. I think it was not easy to play in for the first two shows. Um, because the shoulder seams were a little, like just kept falling down and I was fighting the whole thing. Anyway, um, it was, it was, it was a nice one. And I think it was a lot of people's favorite. And I think, um, it looked really nice. And by the third show, I had moved the tie so that it was on a popper so that it could um, come out and come in. And that was the, the encore dress. And this is the final act dress. Okay, so for the final show, the act two third show dress, the, de the debutant, or A Star Is Born, that's what this dress is called, um, so if the opening look of this show is the goddess Hickman descending to earth, crash landing on earth and trying to get ready to re-enter society, then the closing look is the star ascending. It's, she's coming out, she's debuting, she's, you know, she's re-entering, she's ready for the world. And so um, the kind of references and the influences are kind of very old Hollywood. It is um, Gentlemen's Prefer Blondes. It's Funny Face. It's Gilda. It's 1950s debutante gowns. It's kind of, it's old Hollywood glamour. And it's kind of this, this idea of like, oh, she's a star. She is like, she, she's, she's a star. And so the idea behind all of the sequining and all of the, the like sequin trim running down the dress is the idea that there is so much of her in this dress that it's oozing out and it's dripping down the gown. And so on the end of every single one of the, of the sequin trims, 
every single one has a teeny tiny like sewn on rhinestone on the end of every single one and then there are kind of rhinestones splattered about and there's teardrops all over the bodice and it was so much work it was so much work but I do think it was um I do think it was worth it because I think it looks incredible um it's construction wise it was um, 104 meters of sequin trim, eight meters of taffeta, one bed sheet. I just used a bed sheet for the lining. Um, four meters of boning. So the corset was a 14 panel corset that I got, um, as like a free online pattern. And it was, I did a couple of fittings and then I did like a mock above it for the show that I did in August that was testing all of the material for the WMC show. Um, and, um, bah, 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 bah. and then it was 150 so on rhinestones, half a meter of sequin fabric for the kind of upper bust bit. And then, um, one meter of Jersey, cotton Jersey for the gloves. Um, and it was, um, I, I, I think I gave myself a budget of like 80 pounds and I think we were under budget, but only slightly only slightly. Um, the kind of construction, I'm going to keep going on about the construction. It is in three parts. So it is a corset, a column skirt, and then the train attaches via like Velcro on the waistband. Really simple, really easy. And I wanted to make it in three parts so that it could be transported really easily as well. So it wouldn't have to come in like a huge carrier bag. The, oh yeah, I forgot about the, the petticoat. There is a 15 meter tool petticoat underneath the big train to give it like the volume that it needed um and so I did that as a full circle skirt petticoat so that I could take it out of this project and put it into my next projects um yeah and then um for the for the waist tie of the train I put a little brooch just to keep it attached at the at the hip which was really nice um this was really really lovely to play in it really took quite a while to get used to singing in a corset especially as i made the corset just a little bit snug because i know what my body is like and i know like by the time we get to show day it will be so much smaller than what i'm originally fitting it as because i will just my body is like a completely it's, it's a shifting sands and it will do whatever it wants and so if we can just mitigate the chance of a nip slip like just by making things a little bit snug, then um, then anything's possible. And I did, like, I, I liked that I had a full corset underneath because it kind of caught around my hips and held itself up really nicely then. Um, it, like, held itself up really nicely along my hips rather than being, like, in at the waist and then it's a corselet and that's the end of the, that's the end of the support you're getting. Because I do think that I just needed that extra kind of, like, it needed something to press down upon because the entire gown was holding on to it. It was quite light, that being said. It was a very light... I think if I had done this in, like, a brocade or something really heavy, I would have done it... Um, I would have done it with a lace-up back rather than a zip. Um, I just wanted to be able to get in and out of this dress really, really easily and by myself. So um, it is just a zip on the corset and a zip on the skirt, the column skirt underneath. Um... And then for the column skirt, the slit at the back is literally from the bottom of my bum all the way to the floor. Like, I just wanted the slit on the back of the skirt to be huge so that when I sat down, it was really easy to pull up and, like, spread really nicely so that I didn't have to worry about, like, being trapped in this dress um, and then having to play a, a song. Um... I think it was a gorgeous dress. I think people loved it. I think um, the shoes, oh my God, okay, okay. <laughs> These were the original shoes. They're so fucking ugly. Um, so I kind of panicked and I was like, those are really ugly. And my friend, friend um, came over and was like, oh my God, what are these shoes? And I was like, I know, I know, I know, I'm gonna order these new ones. And so we ended up with these as the, as the shoes. And I think they matched so beautifully. I think they wore really nicely because they're just a nice mid-heel. I love a mid-heel to perform in. 
just, you can do so much. I can move really nicely in them. I'm a dancer, you know? And so that's, I gotta dance. I, yeah, it was, it was really worth like getting a different pair of shoes because I just think they worked so beautifully with it and they were exactly what I needed and exactly what I wanted. And they just, yeah, it, it all, it all came together really, really nicely, but it was like the week of the show these shoes arrived and I was like, okay, can I play harp in them? Are they going to be nice to stand in? Are they going to be too big? Are they going to be too small? This, that, and the other. And they just, it all fit together. It was all perfect. It was silly. It was fun. The gloves were a little bit tricky. So the original conceit behind the gloves was that I was going to be able to do a reveal and have like, take the fingers off and have fingerless gloves. Um, and then after trying to figure out if I could do like a 15 minute routine in them and then take them off and like how that was going to all work and be kind of stable enough to to maintain when while well, I'm moving around and, and whatnot um I just kind of cut my losses and was like okay I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna do a regular pair of gloves and have them be opera length and we'll we'll do it um and I think they by and large I think they looked really great I think they looked really great I will say this if you're ever preparing for a show and you make a pair of gloves do not wear the gloves when you are trying to rehearse because I ended up just rubbing so much makeup onto the fingertips <laughs> because I would be like, I'd be like trying to get myself in like show business mode and I would like be wearing a full face of makeup and then I'd forget that I was wearing a like a light pink glove and I would just like smudge my eyeliner. <laughs> was really bad um especially because they were so much like pretend crying in the show so um <laughs> the tips of those fingers are like ruined now but um apart from that I think it was I think it was I think it was the best outfit I've ever made the the best one I've ever kind of worn on stage and perform in I think it is like the most show business I do not think this is actually controversial I don't think it's the most time consuming of the Sam Hickman Variety Hour costumes the first one the robe with all of the hand embroidered sequins is the most time consuming because that took months whereas this took like like one month of solid work on it um but yeah it was um it was really it was really good I think um I hope I hope this was informative. That's kind of the end of the show. So we, we went from kind of, to recap, the goddess Hickman falling to earth, trying to re-enter society, you know, crash landing, trying to get back to, to where she was. And then by the end of the show, she's ready to ascend. Like that's hopefully the arc that you noticed, but probably not because you were too busy being like, ha 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 ha, isn't this fantastic? Um, so anyway, that is um, all the costumes from the show. Um, yeah, thank you to everyone who came to the Sam Hickman Variety Hour, who enjoyed all of my little bits, all of my songs, all my fabulous guests. Thank you so much. Everyone who worked on the show. Um, yeah, this was an absolute joy to do. Um, I'm going to miss not um, having like a thing coming up because there's absolutely nothing on the horizon. Don't worry. Um, but I am not going to miss wearing pink all the fucking time. I can tell you that much. Oh my gosh, I'm going to wear blue next. Um, stay tuned. Stay tuned. So um, I've been Sam Hickman and this has been a wonderful video all about the costumes from the Sam Hickman Variety Hour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I have nothing to plug. I have nothing going on. I have absolutely, I have literally nothing. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you next time on, on this, I guess. Bye-bye.